of us comes to God in need of renewal, through the fire of God's love, in need of refreshment for our souls, in need of nourishment for our hunger. Hear then these words of invitation from the living God through the prophet Isaiah. Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk with no money and with no cost. Why spend money on what is not bread? And why labour on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good. And you will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Cari fratelli e sorelle, mi unisco con gioia all'Arcivescovo Justin Belby e a tutti voi per condividere quello che porto nel cuore. È Pentecoste, ricordiamo il giorno in cui lo Spirito di Dio scese con potenza. Da quel giorno la vita di Dio si è diffusa tra di noi, portandoci una speranza nuova una pace e una gioia prima sconosciute. A Pentecoste Dio ha contagiato di vita il mondo. Quando stride tutto ciò con il contagio di morte che da me si infesta la terra. Allora, mai come oggi, è necessario invocare lo Spirito Santo perché riversi la vita di Dio, l'amore nei nostri cuori. Infatti, perché il futuro sia migliore, è il nostro cuore che deve diventare migliore. Nel giorno di Pentecoste, popoli che parlavano lingue diverse si incontrarono. In questi mesi, invece, ci è chiesto di osservare misure giuste e necessarie per distanziarci. Ma possiamo comprendere meglio dentro di noi quello che provano gli altri. Ci, si accomunano paura e incertezze. C'è bisogno di risollevare tanti cuori affranti. Penso a quello che Gesù diceva quando parlava dello Spirito Santo. Utilizzava una parola particolare, paraclito, cioè consolatore. Tanti di voi hanno provato la sua consolazione, quella pace interiore che ci fa sentire amati, quella fortezza gentile che dà coraggio sempre, anche nel dolore. Lo Spirito ci dà la certezza di non essere soli, ma sostenuti da Dio. Carissimi, quello che abbiamo ricevuto dobbiamo donarlo. Siamo chiamati a diffondere la consolazione dello Spirito, la vicinanza di Dio. Come fare? Pensiamo a quello che ora vorremmo avere. Conforto, incoraggiamento, qualcuno che si prenda cura di noi, qualcuno che preghi per noi, che pianga con noi, che ci aiuti ad affrontare i nostri problemi. Ecco, tutto quanto vorremmo che gli altri facciano a noi, facciamolo noi a loro. Desideriamo essere ascoltati? Ascoltiamo. Abbiamo bisogno di incoraggiamento? Incoraggiamo. Vogliamo che qualcuno si prenda cura di noi? Prendiamoci cura di chi non ha nessuno. Ci serve speranza per il domani? Doniamo speranza oggi. Oggi assistiamo a una tragica carestia della speranza. Quante ferite, quanti vuoti non colmati... 
Quanto dolore senza consolazione. Facciamoci allora interpreti della consolazione dello Spirito. Trasmettiamo speranza e il Signore aprirà vie nuove sul nostro cammino. Sento di condividere qualcosa proprio sul nostro cammino. Quanto vorrei che come cristiani fossimo più ancora e più insieme testimoni di misericordia per l'umanità duramente provata. Chiediamo allo Spirito il dono dell'unità, perché diffonderemo fraternità solo se vivremo da fratelli tra noi. Non possiamo chiedere all'umanità di stare unita se noi andiamo per strade diverse. Allora preghiamo gli uni per gli altri, sentiamoci responsabili gli uni degli altri. Lo Spirito Santo dona sapienza e consiglio. In questi giorni invochiamolo su quanti sono tenuti a prendere decisioni delicate e urgenti perché proteggano la vita umana e la dignità del lavoro. Su questo si investa, sulla salute, sul lavoro, sull'eliminazione delle dis disuguaglianze e delle povertà. Mai come ora ci serve uno sguardo ricco di umanità. Non si può riprendere da capo a inseguire i propri successi senza preoccuparsi di chi è rimasto indietro. E anche se tanti faranno così, il Signore ci chiede di cambiare rotta. Pietro il giorno di Pentecoste disse con la parresia dello Spirito «Convertitevi». Cioè, cambiate direzione, invertite il senso di marcia. Abbiamo bisogno di tornare a camminare verso Dio e verso il prossimo. Non separati, non anestetizzati di fronte al grido dei dimenticati e del pianeta ferito. Abbiamo bisogno di essere uniti per fronteggiare le pandemie che dilagano, quella del virus, ma anche quella della fame, le guerre, il disprezzo della vita, l'indifferenza. Solo camminando insieme andremo lontani. Cari fratelli e sorelle, voi diffondete l'annuncio di vita del Vangelo e siete un segno di speranza. Vi ringrazio di cuore. Chiedo a Dio di benedirvi e a voi di pregare perché benedica me. Grazie. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul.
39 verse 14 says our praise is because i am fearfully and wonderfully made we are all wonderful not because of what we have done but because god is wonderful and he has made us wonderful god still loves me when i met even when i mess up we all sin and disobey god every day jesus died on the cross and rose again so we can be forgiven by god when God looks at me, he sees the wonderfulness of Jesus, because my sin is forgiven through him. Because God made us, our response should be praised with all our being. Let's read together verses 1 to 16. O oh Lord, you have set us and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You deserve my going out and... Am I lying down? You are familiar with all my ways. For our word is on my tongue. You know completely, O oh Lord. You heard me in behind and before, and have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I live flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I was on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, 
even though you're humble guy me, you won't handle harm me fast. If I say a story with darkness behind me, and the light become light around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, but darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I will praise because I am fearfully and be made. Your works are wonderful, I know that for a while. My frame my frame was not hidden from you when I was made when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes some your eyes some in a form body, all the days ordained for me, were written in your book, before one of them came to be. What lovely words. Joy of heaven to earth come down, fix in us thy humble dwelling, on thy faithful mercy's crown, Jesus thou reading from Acts chapter 2, the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of the Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability. Now there are devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because of each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we could hear each of us in our own native language? 
Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. This is what the spoken through prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus of Nazareth was crucified and killed. This Jesus God raised up, and all of that are all witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this to you, both see and hear. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promises is for you, for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. So those who welcomed his message were baptised and that day about 3,000 persons were added. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as any had their need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and they ate food with a glad of generous hearts, praising God and having their good will of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their numbers to those who were being saved. Thanks be God for his world.
Greetings to you all. Uh, my name is Archbishop Angelos of the Coptic Orthodox Church, and I'm here with you today because, like many of you, if not all of you, I believe that what we have in common is genuinely much, much greater than what separates us. We all believe in the empowering of the Holy Spirit, and we believe that on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended and empowered them as he empowers us today. So with that understanding, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, was buried, he descended to the dead, and on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. At Pentecost, we simply don't tell a story about how the first disciples received the Holy Spirit. We pray today that we might receive that same power from on high. Let us pray to our Father. Where our souls are dry and weary, we seek the living water of your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Where our hearts are broken and wounded, we seek the healing of the Comforter. Come, Holy Spirit. Where our lives are weak and overwhelmed, we seek the power of your breath. Come, Holy Spirit. Where our witness is unfaithful and unfruitful, we seek the enabling of the Advocate. Come, Holy Spirit. Where our faith is cold and stagnant, we seek the fire of your love. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us afresh today. We ask in the name of Jesus that we might glorify our Father in heaven. Amen. and issues that are important to us. Come now, Holy Spirit, and renew the hearts of your people. Dear God, you love all you have made. We pray for our world. We pray for those who have little and those who face a difficult future, for those who live in fear and those who have nothing. We pray that your spirit of peace would come and unite the nations. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your people. Dear God, you know all our needs. Send your spirit of wisdom on our nation and our leaders. Help them to make decisions that are good for all. Strengthen the hands of those who work for peace and frustrate those who stir up division, hatred and violence. Come Holy Spirit and guide the hearts of your people. Dear God, you love us when we don't yet love you. We pray that your Spirit would come and draw everyone to receive your love. We pray for those we know 
that they might come to faith. Come, Holy Spirit, and open the hearts of your people. Dear God, the Son knows pain and suffering. Send your spirit of healing on those who are in pain. And you pray for those who look after sick and dying, that you will strengthen them through your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, and strengthen the hearts of your people. Amen. On the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit descended and was given so that the good news could be shared. And on that day, it was shared by a handful, but to multitudes, and they all received this wonderful good news in their own language. And so now, as we recite the prayer that our Lord himself has taught us, I encourage you to join me, but to recite it in the language of your choice. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory of the Now, and for Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. Where your streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Your name. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect to do his will, working in you that which is all pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm.